Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you and I just want to share some thoughts about the Jehovah's Witness and uh, you can get me on jasonburnspreacher.com and you can get my website there and Facebook and Twitter and also Royal Blood Ministries. Um, I want to just introduce you to some booklets and books, uh, Jehovah's Witness by Robert M. Bowman, published by OM Publishing. It's a very in-depth booklet, very intricate detail concerning the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, it's a very, very good booklet to look at. And also, uh, this book, um, Kingdom of Cults, and, uh, by Walter Martin and uh, very very good booklets and I just want to share with you uh, really my thoughts about the Jehovah's Witness why I'm not a Jehovah's Witness and um, my thoughts to Jehovah's Witness um, theology and teaching I was brought up a Jehovah's Witness um, as a little boy my mum went to to the Kingdom Hall and took me as a little boy and my impressions of the Jehovah's Witness growing up as a boy up to about 12 years of age is that the Jehovah's Witness were very nice people and uh, I can only remember uh, fond memories of people being nice to me and, and, and being exceedingly kind and caring people that is my abiding memory as a child I remember them being a people of great study, they were always at conventions and studying the Bible, and also a people who were always busy uh, going out and doing evangelism. <clears throat> but I never became a Jehovah's Witness because I always knew that there was something not quite right about it. I didn't know what, but I just knew that there was something not quite right. But my mum was always ardent. Jehovah's Witness, very, very staunch Jehovah's Witness. And I tried to talk to my mum many times over the years to explain to her. I tried to explain to her that Christ died on the cross and took the punishment for our sin. And I prayed for her every day. But no matter how much I, I talked to her about the gospel, no matter how I approached it, how I was answering questions or being critical of the foundations of the Jehovah's Witness, like Pastor Russell, and nothing I said seemed to get through really. But I think one of the th things that began to change my mum's mind is reading uh, good, solid Christian books, reading the Bible, uh, and, and studying the Bible in depth. So, for example, I gave my mum some books by John was uh, by uh, A. W. Pink, who was very famous for good, solid expanding the Bible, and that really spoke to my mum and really opened my mum's eyes to see how the Jehovah's Witness teaching was not as deep as she thought it was, and it kind of shows me that if you keep praying and you give people the truth. In the end, you know, if people are sincere, God will open their eyes to, to the truth. Um, so, a couple of things that my mum has said that, that have stayed with me concerning her uh, conversion, really, to, to the gospel, is my mum points out that one of the things that opened her eyes was the, um, the memorial that only a few people actually attend the memorial of the Lord's Supper. But yet, she began to realise that the memorial of the Lord's Supper is for every believer. That made her see that the teaching that she's imbibed was not the right teaching. The second thing is that my mum realised that, or told me, that for her, the Jehovah's Witness teaching of salvation was come into the ark of the the, the watchtower of the Jehovah's Witness organisation and you'll be safe. And that in a way was or is the really the salvation of the Jehovah's Witness. If you come into the ark 
of the watchtower, you're going to be safe in the end, when the end comes. Whereas my mum realised that, no, you have to trust Christ and, as your Lord and Saviour, and that's when you know you're safe. It's not being in the ark of the Jehovah's Witness, but it's being in the arms of Christ and trusting Him as Lord and Saviour. So, so, those are kind of two areas that my mum has noted and, and that made her change her mind concerning the Jehovah's Witness. And I just want to say to Jehovah's Witness out there that I, I really admire you. I admire you going out. I admire that you're very nice people. And I admire the work that you put in. But I, I just want to ask a question, couple of questions. And these questions are, are sincere questions. And the first question is, is Jesus God? Now I know that you're going to come up with things like, well, when it says in 1 John, it says not. In the beginning was the Word, but it's a God. And I know you're going to say it's a. And I know you're going to take me to uh, Proverbs 8, where it says, and wisdom was created. And I was there before the foundation of the world. Um, I want to take you to a couple of scriptures and to, to, to look at them with an open mind. And if we go to Isaiah chapter 9, and I know that you have answers for this, but I just want you to look at it with an open mind. And I'm using the King James. So, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So this son shares the same name as the Father. The name of God for the Father it will be the name of the Son. We turn to John chapter 1. Read the King James. Use the King James. In the beginning was the Word, verse 1. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Greek, the, the idea with is not like this, right? Uh, here is uh, one book, and this is a book, and in the beginning was the book, and here's another book, and they're with each other, so the idea with doesn't mean that there. It's more like this, in the beginning was, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with, and the word was with God and the word was God. The idea with is, is that. So you have two, but actually they are one. That it's so entwined, so intricately together that they're one. They're two, but they are one. Alright? That's what it means. And I know that your arguments would be, well, how can, how can you say that Jesus is God if he is with God? So here's a book with another book. The book is with this book. So you're saying there are two. So it's saying Jesus is with God. God and Jesus and they're with each other. 
That's what it's mean, that's what you said. But the Greek has the idea of this intimate fellowship together as one. Alright. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. So here it's saying that Jesus, the Word, created. And now only God can create. I used to say this to my mom many times, but and I say it to Job's witness, and it goes in one ear and out the other ear, but only God is the Creator. And it's saying here that the Word is the Creator. Now if you turn to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3.16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, and it's a mystery. Very often when I talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, it's reason, logic, but this is saying it's a mystery, it's beyond logic. I'm just asking you to look at that in an open way. Then if you turn to uh, Philippians. Philippians. Uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2. It says, verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, your translation will have something different, but read the King James. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation. Took upon himself the form of a servant. So, he was equal with God, but he became a servant. Uh, one writer said, these famous verses substitute, substantiate the assertion of verse 5b that Jesus did indeed have within himself the same attitude of verse 2 and 4 which the readers of Paul's letters are also uh, to maintain with him, themselves. Verse 6 8 may be translated as follows, for he... Though eternal in assessing the divine nature did not regard his self his existing in a manner equal with God, i.e. his heavenly existence or divine lifestyle as something to be selfish maintained, but he emptied himself in that he assumed a servant's nature and appeared in the, the likeness of human men. Being in the form of God signifies that Christ has eternally possessed the very nature of God, to own the nature of God is to be God and to be equal with God. And the other personalities of the Godhead, namely the Father and the Spirit, thought it not robbery to be equal with God means that Christ decided not to continue enjoying his heavenly existence. He enjoyed the same divine lifestyle in heaven that God enjoyed. Though the Son should have lawfully maintained the heavenly existence, he did not. Rather, he assumed a servant's position. So he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. It's very clear that Jesus is God. Secondly, and that's why he says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Secondly, not only is Jesus God and I would ask you to meditate on these passages and get your King James out and read them from the King James and then finally secondly you know how are we saved how, how do we get saved in in the Jehovah's Witness way and how do we get saved from what the Bible says we turn to Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So he says, for by grace you are saved. Grace means undeserved mercy. 
that you are saved, saved from what? From the wrath of God, through power, through faith. Faith in what? And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Jesus Christ died on a cross. When he died on that cross, he was taking the punishment for your sin and my sin. He was dying as your substitute. He was dying in your place. Instead of God punishing you, he punished his son. And Jesus Christ died in your place. That if you believe in him, you will be forgiven. Not account on what you have done, but on account of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Salvation is not trusting in an organization, but trusting in Christ as your Lord and Saviour. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're saved by grace, not by works. We're saved by what Christ has done for us. And um, have you found rest for your soul? Have you found peace for your soul? Many, many people don't like the doctrine of hell. But the Bible teaches it. And when Christ died, he died to save hell deserving sinners. And he died on your behalf to save you. If you confess your sin and believe in him, you will be saved. But if you reject him, you'll be lost. And I'm just asking as a Jehovah's Witness to think about that, to think about what Christ has done for you and to come and repent and believe in him, turn away from that which is wrong and believe in Christ and trust in him as your Lord and Saviour. I really admire what you do, I admire the things that you do, but if you don't follow the truth and if you don't follow Christ then you're going to be blinded by error and lost for eternity. So please, 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 don't take my word for it. Don't take the Watchtower's word for it. Get yourself a King James Bible and pray and say, Lord, teach me. Have I really got it right? Have the Jehovah's Witnesses really got it right? Show me. Open my eyes and teach me your word and read it with an open mind and allow the Spirit of God to teach you and I'm sure if you do it'll show you the Word of God will show you that the Jehovah's Witness teaching is not correct and you've been blinded by error God bless you let's pray Father I pray that every Jehovah's Witness listening to your word today I just pray, show them your love, Lord, and open their eyes. Speak to them. And, and just may they know your love and salvation. May they come to know you as your uh, as Saviour, Lord. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you and have a lovely day. Thank you for listening. Take care.